Hey everyone, welcome to another video view. This is the Transformers Studio Series SS112 Transformers 1 Deluxe Class Optimus Prime. You can see him there in front of the box. We'll go ahead and put him off the side real quick. And yep, box, you got Transformers 1 up here. And you got the Transformers logo and Takara Tomy and 112. And hey, look, there's a bit of a CGI model from the movie. Well, yeah, Hasbro 8 Plus, all that stuff. Takara, up here you have Transformers 1. On the side you have, hey, there's an up close shot of him and his face and everything. It's Deluxe Class. On this side you have a big old shot of him in the Autobot symbol on the and authentics on the bottom you have manufacturing details and what's included and on the back of course you have product shots and copyrights and warnings and of course yeah hey look the backdrop and hey, if a hero fulfills his destiny becoming the legendary Optimus Prime and it's Metrop the Metropolis of Iacon is a backdrop which yeah included in the box in here you have that whole thing which get that out real quick and hey look there is is the uh Look at the old Metropolis thing, and that's pretty neat. You can have him on there if you want. It's just standing there doing the thing, or you could just recycle it. <laughs> of course, along with the figure inside the box, you have the instructions, which are somewhat straightforward. Although there's definitely a lot of hmm about it, because it's like, not the instructions themselves so much as the actual step is like annoying. <laughs> so, all right. Deluxe Optimus Prime here for Transformers 1 movie. Yeah, it's coming soon, although a lot of people have already seen it uh, because of previous events. But yeah, uh, this is the, uh, the Optimus Prime, you know, after he becomes Orion Pax, or after he's Orion Pax. All that stuff, all that, yeah, things happen in the movie, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see here, um, getting close, you can see his face kind of got a bit of roundish disc to it. You know, it's kind of general roundishness to him in general, like rounded off corners over here and there. You can see, uh, you know, the shoulders and the gray, lots of lines there. Kind of that, it's particularly shaded gray, which a lot of people are kind of upset about. I'll get that a little, just a little second. But uh, yeah, you can see the blue shins and everything. Cause the yellow bits on his toes, more gray and red. And he's got a bit of a backpack, but nothing too egregious. And uh, there you go. Really not a whole lot to it. It's a deluxe class, but it's very Optimus Prime-esque. So yeah. Um, yeah, you can see here, because the shaded gray here, in this particular lighting, it looks very yellow to the point of people making jokes about, ha they're selling, selling it pre-yellowed now, ha ha. Um, the weird thing about this this particular gray is, like, yes, in this, plat in this light that I have over these reviews, this is very yellow looking, but in another different room with more natural, kind of more yellow toned lighting, it comes across as just plain gray. This is kind of one of those weird things where a lot of photography is gonna make this look a lot worse than it actually does in most uh, natural lighting, so be mindful of that. So like store lighting, it was the more harsh like white lighting I'm using for this studio setup is going to make it look more yellow, but in a lot of more natural, you know, more a lot of light you know, people's just lighting that they have in their rooms or whatever. The yellow lighting, this is going to look a lot more better. So just keep that in mind. So uh, yeah, he just got a couple of accessories, namely um, he got a couple of these things, which can be you know smokestacks, and because they're five millimeter uh, pegs, they can also go in his hands, I guess, as a pistol or something, but. Not sure if that's a thing, but I know it's Prime Changers version. They advertise this. Uh, so that's the thing. You can use those as pistols or, you know, um, put them on smokestacks on his shoulders. Like, you know, you're kind of supposed to do. You can put those as smokestacks or whatever they are. I'm not sure what they actually would. Well, they're not really smokestacks, but, you know, they kind of have that smokestack look. I guess in vehicle mode, they're kind of just more guns or something. Or something. I'm not sure. Because, like, would a Cybertronian vehicle even have exhaust? <laughs> <laughs> there's those you can have those accessories he does have look of course a translucent blue axe which goes over his hand or if you want you can store it back here there's two slots here and there's tabs on here you can just kind of store it you can store it right here like that either side or of course put it over it looks very tight right there really enough or of course you could put this uh over his hand like so and hey look now he's got his uh Axe with a little hole in it, weirdly enough. He's got his axe and everything. There's that. And there's this thing which <laughs> does not go with figure. That's me. This this thing which does nothing in robot mode but can be stored, um, supposedly, back here. See this, this weird, these bit weird bits right here. Um, to do is there's this, this, these bits right here on the, see right here, those, those little tab things. It's supposed to, kind of tab over all this stuff and it's also kind of it's kind of resting points it doesn't tab in super secure i mean it's holding in but it does not take very much to knock it out of the uh storage so uh, be careful with that it doesn't take much 
to knock that out of storage, which is a little annoying, to be honest. But um, yeah, it, it could, hides away back there somewhat decently, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, it might be best to just kind of leave it off the figure in general. But so of course, one last accessory, which is stored in his chest right here. And hey, it's a matrix. He just opens up. This doesn't even like latch or anything. It just, it just rests over top, which is interesting. And also on top of the, uh, uh, the pieces can go separately, which is interesting. So you can do that. You want to be a, um, a little matrix accessory, which, you know, you can see in there. It just pegs right in. You can see it's once again, that silver and bronze with a blue jewel. It's just translucent blue. The cool thing about this one is that little tabs on the sides, these little, these little tabs on the sides, and there's actually little slots on the, his fists. So you can actually... See, there's that, that piece just fell out. Like I said, it does not take much to, it does not take much to knock it loose, unfortunately. You can, if I can get this in his hand, can you get him to hold it with those, these slots and everything? Although, yeah. There we go. There. See, he can hold it, which is pretty neat that they did that. So there you go. There's the uh, Matrix. So you can hold it in his hands how you want. And uh, and again, just stores in there real nice and just pegs on and there you go. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this off because this otherwise, if I'm not fumbling everything, this is otherwise just gonna fall off constantly anyway. So uh, yeah, that's accessories, uh, articulation, heads on a ball joint, so you got left and right. You got a lot of up because of the way it transforms and everything. You got not really a lot of down though. You got a little bit of waggle though. Shoulders can do a full, well, would be, yeah, do a full 360 once you get things out of the way. They go outward like that, kind of do the weird thing that people don't like with the shoulders right there, or, yeah, that's pretty much it. They do have butterflies, which is nice. There's a butterfly joint, though, there. Um, thanks to sculpting and the backpack and everything, you can see um, they kind of don't go all the way in unless you push them forward a bit, so then it kind of looks a little weird because now his shoulders are kind of forward unless you move the backpack out of the way, and even then it's not so much. You can pretty much get it that far down when it's like at his side. So, yeah, uh, not a huge deal. Those actually look like a natural stance, but it's just kind of a little weird. But um, anyway, there's a bicep swivel right there. There's an elbow bend, about 90 degrees. There's a wrist swivel, which is nice. The race rotation is weird because one, it's off center, and two, it's way up here. And that's because part transformations, but it works, but it's just kind of odd looking because once you, you swivel more than like here and it starts just looking weird down here, uh, there are hips and stuff, but also there's this, well, for lack of a better term, there's a diaper here, which you have to get out of the way for like forward movement. You bet like forward movement goes that far, pretty far actually it would go far for more if it wasn't for this piece. Uh, it got back pretty far outward. You have. Not quite the full splits. Um, you do have the ball joint right here. You can get a little bit of swiveling, but there's also a swivel, dedicated swivel right above the knee right there. There's a knee bend, which goes more than 90 degrees. And down here at the feet, you do have quite a bit of ankle tilt. And uh, the toes can also go down as well if that's necessary for anything. So yeah, um, yeah, articulation's pretty solid for deluxe. Nothing amazing, but you know, Pretty solid, and there, I will say the uh, butterfly joints are actually very helpful. But yeah, um, just the hip skirt can be a little annoying. But yeah, some uh, quick, quick comparisons, a quick comparison though, I guess. Um, just not a whole lot to compare them to quite yet, so I'm just going ahead and compare them to Earthrise Prime just because to give you an idea. He's a deluxe, so he's quite a bit shorter. Um, not even particularly tall deluxe or anything, but yeah. So there you go on that. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty solid looking robot. The biggest thing probably is going to upset people is simply the color of the gray is going to has that more of a yellowish tone, which is kind of some upset a lot of people. Uh, this thing doesn't hold worth crap in the robot mode. And uh, yeah, um, the other thing would be. What was I thinking of? When I had just had him head. Um, the other thing is simply um, a lot of people have kind of 
the prime changers version of this Optimus, which is part of the main line, five bucks cheaper. And a lot of people are saying it's generally a better toy, which I haven't experienced it yet, but I might have to go pick one up now. So I might go, go hunt one down and see if I can, uh, make that assessment. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's, um, some people are saying that's a better toy overall, even with some of its, uh, its own drawbacks, but yeah. Uh, so that's it for the robot mode, I guess. I'm um, go ahead and get them transformed into uh, truck mode, and there we go. So uh, first things first is take the head here, rotate 180 degrees, uh, bring it back right here like this, and then collapse this whole platform in like that. I'll take the, uh, make sure these are straightened out right there. <sighs> take this and bring this up right here like that. Just kind of get that out of the way a little bit, and then rotate the waist 180 degrees. Take the arms here and this is a pretty cool little thing that's one part of the asp aspect of the transformation like which is take these bits right here on the shoulders and bring them out like that and leaving this part in bring this out right here like that and then you take this right here and you untab this the whole waist and bring it back like that and this piece right here you want to go ahead and then uh bring out could be a bit of a pain sometimes yeah, bring that out bring it forward like that then you go ahead right here and go ahead and bring these inward like this. They'll kind of just kind of slide right in like this. And you can bring the arms down right here like that. Then once you do that, you can go ahead and bring this part back in like so and bring it back up like that. And then take this and rotate this around. And then this will come over top like this. And this will just kind of clip in right there. And that will come over top and clip in like that. I'm going to make sure that's all lined up because here now we're going to take the, well, the diaper, I guess, and uh, push it up like that and then take the legs here and bring them back like so. Bring them back. There's these little bits right here. You want to take these and bring these around. You can see that they go around like this, like that. Again, bring this around like that. Take the toe here and bring it down until it clicks. Bring clicks. Now, uh, here's the thing that's a, kind of annoying about this transformation is uh, they don't tell you this, but the, the, the thighs need to be at a bit of an, a slight angle for them to line up with the slots on the arms. There's all these little red tabs here, which will need to line up with these slots. They don't tell you that they need to be at a slight angle for this to actually work properly. And they don't tell you that because, yeah, you want to bring this in. There's, there's these tabs here, which will go in these little slots here as well. And the hands will go over top of these little pegs. Gonna have to do all of that and then hopefully you have it all lined up properly and uh, it works. There we go, and that's lined up. I've also had problems with this, I didn't mention this, but sometimes that this, the diaper piece likes to come off really easily, which is a little annoying, but yeah. Then you go ahead and tab this arm in as two. Hopefully it's all lined up and get that all tabbed in and pegged in and everything. And then before you peg tab these together, take the axe here. These little tabs here will go kind of under the slots and the kneecaps. And the axe blade will kind of go underneath this and everything too. And just kind of bring it in like that. And then tab the legs together. And that will hold the axe in place. Make sure to do some alignment if you need to might be necessary. Make sure, yeah, give it all a good squeeze. Make sure it's all lined up. Then take the these these bits and rotate them 180 like that, so they look like that pretty much. And like that. So, and then finally, take this piece and make sure the rounded bits, these parts right here, are on top, and then just, well, tab it into the bumper. so and there you go that is transformers one optimus in his vehicle mode and yeah this truck is kind of odd looking it's very cybertronian you kind of got eh, it's you know you get to see a lot of the curving you know kind of more kind of curve detailing of the Transformers 1 movie and stuff. Uh, got some parts for him. Also, there's a lot of, you can see, there's just a lot of just gaps in there. 
it's not bad, but yeah, it's like a huge chunk of hollowness space just kind of just easily seen from a lot of angles. It's kind of a little disappointing. Um, it does have wheels. You can see there's you know, a couple in the legs and a couple right there on the shoulders, and they do it does roll pretty decently. So there's that. Um, but beyond that, uh, it's kind of a weird thing. You got the hands just kind of chilling out, just kind of like you know. It's kind of integrated in the transformation, but it's kind of weird. The hands are just kind of right there, particularly for a studio series. Which, yeah, it's just the hands are just right there, right? They're just there on the vehicle mode. Just nothing. The whole thing's sitting crooked, too, and I don't know why. And they're just kind of there, and it's kind of a little annoying that's the case, but I don't know what else you can do. About that, well, Prime Days of Virgin actually, you know, folds them away, but also kind of is, is potentially inaccurate to the sh movie, so hey, I don't know. Um, but it's not awful, but I'm not really a huge, huge fan of it. And this is, again, just kind of this this thing just kind of right here is kind of odd looking. Just, yeah. Um, let me check. Are these Blast Effect compatible? I actually, sir, on that. I didn't actually t bother testing that. Is these? Eh, not really. They're too. Those are too small, and those are too big. So yeah, not really Bass Effect compatible at all. Interesting that. So, uh, hmm. It's it's a weird looking vehicle, honestly, and I'm not sure. It's and it's on top of that, the transformation, the the arms, getting the arms to all tab in in the proper way is kind of a pain in the butt because you have to tab it in the side here, make sure these thigh pieces are at the right angle and then also bring it over the hands over top the pegs here which sometimes they fight you a bit and it's a little frustrating that's a little frustrating just getting it all squared you know squared away and even now mine's i can't get seem to get it to sit totally straight all the time so uh, i don't know it's just kind of a weird thing and just i'm not sure i'm not the biggest fan of it i don't hate it but it's just like this could have been i feel like this could have been done better but Oh well. Um, maybe many would argue the Prime Changer version is better, even if it's not as accurate. I guess to the movie, so I don't know. Hey, anyway, to make some a quick comparison, here is the uh, Earthrise Optimus, which isn't much bigger, even though it's a whole several size classes large. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's no there's no spot here for a trailer hitch, by the way. So yeah, just in case you were wondering, uh, yeah, no trailer hitch. Yeah, there's uh, that. So, yeah. So, the Transformers 1 studio series, Optimus, is just kind of odd. Got some weird, weird, just weird, almost jank. I would say almost jank to it. It's kind of like, you can't help but feel like they could have done it better. And, I don't know. And, in fact, they did, argue, many would argue they did do better with the Prime Changers version, which I'm going to have to hunt down, hunt down. And also, on top of that, the car is weird, like flagship version which is like significantly larger and everything so i might have to i'm getting that one for sure but yeah it's just kind of a odd toy it's got a lot of good bits but like on top of that the weird the choice of the choice of gray for the a lot of the plastic is kind of an interesting one because it's got kind of that very unappealing like oh no my toy's yellowing kind of shade which a lot of people have will have a viscerally negative reaction to because of that so, I don't know. This is kind of an odd figure, and I don't know if I... I don't know if it's really worth it or not. It's just kind of a... It's okay, I guess, but you might be better served by the Prime Changer version that's five bucks cheaper at retail as well, so uh, who knows. But as a whole, it's just kind of an okay figure that's kind of got a couple glaring flaws and oddities to it. So... I don't know if this looks appealing to you. Go ahead and pick it up, but also at the same time, be well aware that's not that good in some ways. It's hard. It's so dis disappointing for me to have to say that Optimus Prime is not that good. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll maybe that t cool Takara one will be a lot better as a whole, or you'll be happy with the Prime Changers version, which again is five dollars cheaper. At least a retail price. And considering this, I believe this is what they consider the class A of toy release. It might just be simply uh, be so oversaturated. They might may be able to get it for sub retail at some point in the future. So who knows? 
So that's my thoughts. It's just, it's hard to, I can't say I would totally recommend it, but I also can't say it's not that. I also can say it's not really as bad as a lot of people make it out to be. It's just kind of a weird mismatch of good ideas and bad ideas. So uh, that's it for this review. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Go like, comment, subscribe. Check out my social media. It's down in the description and at the end of the video. Check out my coffee and my Patreon. And I shall see you next time with another video review. Mm -hmm.